Now, the news from the Voice of America. Protesters demand Egyptian president resign, and report says America spied on its allies. I'm Christopher Cruz, reporting live from the VOA News Center in Washington. Huge crowds gathered in the Egyptian capital Cairo on Sunday. Some are there in opposition to Islamist President Mohamed Morsi, and some are there to support him. Sunday marked one year since his inauguration as Egypt's first freely elected leader. Thousands of secular and liberal opposition activists filled Cairo's Tahrir Square, waving Egyptian flags, chanting slogans, and demanding Mr. Morsi's resignation. Multiple bomb blasts killed at least 41 people across Pakistan Sunday. In the northwestern city of Peshawar, a bomb exploded near a security convoy, killing at least 17 people. In the southwestern city of Quetta, a suicide bomber targeted an area near a Shiite Muslim mosque, killing 20 people and wounding at least 60. And in the north Waziristan tribal area, a roadside bomb hit an army convoy, killing four soldiers. There's been no claim of responsibility for any of the attacks. American Secretary of State John Kerry has finished days of separate talks with Israeli and Palestinian leaders about restarting peace negotiations. We have made real progress on this trip, and I believe that with a little more work, uh, the start of final status negotiations could be within reach. Mr. Kerry met Sunday with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. He also met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, including a six-hour-long session that ended early Sunday. This is Mr. Kerry's fifth trip to the Middle East. He says he will be back. The German news magazine Der Spiegel is reporting that an American spy agency placed electronic listening devices in European Union offices. The report also says the agency got into the EU's computer networks. The magazine says its report was based on a secret U.S. National Security Agency document obtained from future fugitive former NSA contract worker Edward Snowden. You are listening to the news from The Voice of America. President Obama and his wife and daughters visited the now former prison where Nelson Mandela spent many years for fighting to end apartheid in South Africa. Mr. Obama did not meet with Mr. Mandela, who has been in the hospital for weeks fighting a lung infection. VOA's senior White House correspondent Dan Robinson is traveling with Mr. Obama. In remarks overheard by media, he spoke to his daughters about the political nonviolence movement pioneered by Mahatma Gandhi that took root in South Africa. Mr. Obama's next stop was a youth center at the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation. The main event of Mr. Obama's visit Sunday is his speech at the University of Cape Town framing his administration's Africa policy and approach to U.S. assistance and security cooperation. Dan Robinson. VOA News in South Africa. Officials in Senegal have detained the former dictator of Chad, Hassan Habre. Mr. Habre ruled Chad from 1982 to 1990 when he was ousted by a military coup. He's facing charges of crimes against humanity. He's accused of ordering more than 40,000 political killings, as well as systematic torture and human rights violations. He had been living freely in Senegal for the past 22 years. The World Health Organization says early treatment for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, can save millions of lives. The UN agency has just released new treatment guidelines for people infected with HIV. Lisa Schlein reports. WHO says recent evidence indicates that treating people with HIV earlier with safe, affordable, and easier to manage medicines will help them live longer, healthier lives. Because the medication lowers the amount of virus in the blood, WHO says this will greatly reduce the risk of transmitting the HIV infection to others. Cambodia has quickly reversed an order that barred local radio stations from broadcasting foreign news programs before July's general election. The reversal followed protests from broadcasters, the public, and the United States. Last week, the Cambodian Information Ministry said local radio stations could not broadcast information from foreign news media for 31 days prior to the July 28th election. But late Saturday, the ministry released a statement that said it would allow local stations to broadcast foreign-produced programs. Top story of the hour, huge crowds gathered in the Egyptian capital Cairo on Sunday. Competing demonstrations, some in opposition to Islamist President Mohamed Morsi, and some there to support him. That's the news at this hour from the Voice of America. There's more on these and other stories from around the world, around the clock, at voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News, Washington. Coming 
up on the Voice of America, English teaching and learning English. We begin with our English teaching programs, new dynamic English, and functioning in business. At half past the hour universal time, you'll hear the new Learning English magazine show, As It Is, followed by Words and Their Stories, and the Learning English program, People in America. Thank you for listening to VOA.